Hey guys, in today's video, I want to talk about the quarterfinal matchups in Indian Wells. I want to give you my predictions for the semifinals. But first, I want to start off by talking about Djokovic withdrawing from Miami. And the thing that's concerning regarding Djokovic is the following. I want to thank all you Italian speakers for translating what Djokovic said at the net to Nardi in his second round loss. And for you guys that don't know, there was a controversial call in the second set when Djokovic was up to love. He had lost the first set. It was break point Nardi. Nardi had stopped playing the point thinking the ball was out. Then Djokovic was in the half court. He could have put the ball away, but he kind of stopped playing as well. And Nardi ended up winning the point. So it turns out that Djokovic was not only complaining to the umpire afterwards, but even after the match, he told Nardi that was not fair. So from Djokovic's point of view, he is saying that Nardi did this on purpose. In other words, he implied gamesmanship from Nardi. I absolutely did not see it that way. I think Nardi thought the ball was out. There was no other examples in Nardi's first round match in the match against Djokovic apart from that one point or in his loss against Tommy Paul where he was doing things like this. So I do think that Nardi simply thought the ball was out. So Djokovic implying gamesmanship to Nardi at the net is not right, especially since Nardi is such a huge Djokovic fan. I mean, he had a Djokovic poster on his wall. So this is very uncharacteristic from Novak because he's a very gracious loser. I talk many times how Novak is generally more gracious in defeat compared to Federer or Nadal. So not only is this uncharacteristic behavior from Novak, but to me, this is the first time in a long, long time that I saw a lack of mental strength from Novak on the court. Because if he said this, to the kid at the net this must have been in his mind for a while and it makes no sense because he ended up winning the second set so it really doesn't matter he should have forgotten about this incident so Djokovic is in a little bit of a predicament right now I know he wants to keep going until the Los Angeles Olympics in 2028 he's got a tremendous amount of points to defend he's got a little bit of a buffer zone and a warm-up to the French Open he didn't really do well in those clay court tournaments leading to the French Open, but then once we get into French Open, Wimbledon, hardcore season, he's got a tremendous amount of points to defend, and it's going to be very difficult for him to hold the number one ranking. Now on to the quarterfinals and Indian Wells. Tommy Paul is an absolute beast. If you watched Breakpoint, you learned a little bit more about his personality. He's a very laid-back guy. He used to be a party guy, actually, and then he decided to dedicate his life only to tennis and become more serious about it. And he is capable of making huge results. What impressed me last year was the fact that he was beating Carlos Alcaraz. And mind you, he was beating Alcaraz prior to that little mini slump, because the slump of Alcaraz started after the US Open. That's where he started to get some sketchy results. What I've heard is that Tommy Paul is one of the fastest guys on tour, one of the best movers on tour. Now here's a question, can he beat Medvedev in the semis? This surface, possibly suits Paul more than Medvedev. It's a real gritty, slow surface. But this Medvedev guy is one of the most amazing tennis players I think we've ever seen. The way he figures out how to win tennis matches is unbelievable. So while I do think that Paul has a really good chance, I have a feeling that Medvedev is gonna figure out a way uh, to come through and make the final. Yannick Sinner is blazing through the draw right now. Best player in the world no doubt about it. The power and the precision of his ground strokes is spectacular. He's serving big, he can come in to the net and finish points off there. But you know what impresses me the most about Sinner? Is that open stance sliding two-handed backhand on the defensive that he can rip for winners. That to me is a shot that's so impossible, maybe because my left knee is a mess. It's got torn ligaments in it, so I can't even think to hit that shot. But the athleticism that's required to hit a ball like that is out of this world. Now, of course, Djokovic, Nadal, and Alcaraz can pull these shots off as well, and other players can do it as well. But the way Sinner does it, the weight of his ball is so heavy. He hits the ball so big, even from defensive situations. I don't think Indian Wells is his favorite surface, but despite that, he's highly capable of winning this tournament. And now let's get to the main topic, and that's the fact that I think Carlos Alcaraz has found his form. He is back to his top level. It took a while. I knew it was going to happen. It was only a matter of time. Slumps are normal. Even the big three had slumps. But now Alcaraz finds himself on a surface that 
benefits his game and there's just something about him when you watch him play he's got a smile on his face even in yesterday's match against Zverev there was a B incident I don't know if you saw that they suspended play for almost two hours there were tons of bees on the court and it was funny seeing the beekeeper interact with the players he was giving the players advice on what they should do if a bee lands on him and I was watching the live feed on Tennis Channel Plus with no commentary and they just ran the video through the entire suspension and they were showing the players hanging out and you can see Alcaraz just smiling and in a relaxed, positive mood. I definitely think he's back. When you watch him play, the speed of the shot has increased. He's back to absolutely clocking forehands over 100 miles an hour. I feel like the feel on the droppers is back. He's hitting forehand drop shots that are more precise than they were in a while. Serving well, returning well, moving well, of course. And my feeling is... And I know you're probably going to have a different opinion. I do think that Alcaraz, just like he did last year, he's going to beat Yannick Sinner in the semis and he's going to beat Medvedev in the final. Why do I think that? Because I do think that this surface in particular benefits Alcaraz the most out of those three guys. The women's tournament in Indian Wells has been great. And I'm going to give you my predictions for the semifinals. So, this surface suits Iga more than any other player because Iga has a tremendous amount of spin on her shots and she moves well. So she is my pick to win the title. And in fact, I think she can win a ton of Indian Wells in the coming years. In the semifinals, she faces Marta Kostiuk, who's been playing really well this year. Her ranking keeps going up. She had a really tough quarterfinal match against Potapova, a player that she faced a lot in juniors, and this was a really nervy match. Kostiuk was up 6-0, 3-0, and looked like she's gonna come blazing through, but then Potapova started playing better, came back, and Kostiuk ended up winning that set 7-5. But despite the fact that Kostiuk was playing well, I don't think she's gonna have much of a chance against Iga. Caroline Wozniacki had to retire against Iga in her quarterfinal match, but it's an amazing run that Wozniacki had after coming back from retirement. She's playing extremely well. Her type of tennis, the high percentage game, combined with her athleticism, I think she has a chance to get back into the top 10. It was nice to also see Angelique Kerber win some consecutive matches and Wozniacki actually beat Kerber in the fourth round before facing Iga. On the bottom half of the draw I think Coco Goff is going to make it through the final. Again this surface suits her well. She has a tremendous amount of spin on the forehand. A lot of people don't realize how good her forehand is. It's a very tricky shot to play. Even though she blazed through the hardcore season last year, won the US Open, People are still complaining about her forehand, but the forehand is actually very tricky to play. It's a very heavy forehand. It's higher than what a lot of these female players are used to and makes it very challenging to play. Coco is gonna play Maria Sakari, who's been playing well this tournament. And in the quarter, she beat an American player, Emma Navarro, who has been playing so well. She's going up in the rankings. To me, Emma Navarro is the American version of Daria Kazakina. A lot of variety in her game, knows how to mix it up, can hit a kick serve, can hit a slice serve, heavy topspin forehand, moves great. There's a new player on the scene, a lot of people are not familiar with Emma Navarro. She played college tennis at Virginia, just like Danielle Collins did. And if you remember Macy from my series, Emma versus Macy, it's a great series that I did. A couple years ago, you can go to my playlist and watch that one. Macy Epstein actually played for University of Virginia. She played doubles with Danielle Collins while she was there. University of Virginia is one of the top programs both for the men and the women. So Emma Navarro, another player coming out of college, going up in the rankings, and it's going to be fun to see how she's going to do in the upcoming tournament in Miami and in the clay court season. Guys, let me know in the comments section who you think is going to win in the semis, both in the men's draw and the women's draw, and I'll see you in the next video.